body of the heart to each hand, the heart to the feet, and the heart to the abdomen, which you've probably heard the term uh, health is a free flow of energy. Yeah? And uh, well, that's the system they're talking about. It's like that's the deepest energetic system in the body. And when that is open, all your acupuncture meridians will be opened up, all the arteries and veins will open up, everything will function properly. See, and when that starts to get blocked, that's when things start to uh, malfunction. You start to develop arthritis. That's just an energetic block in one of the knees or, or elbow or wrist. And then food starts to accumulate behind that energetic block. What happens if you open up those channels that I talk about, it will literally just clear that right out and you'll have no problem because health is a free flow of energy, basically. And so you just need to keep those channels open. See, and that, that was our, our purpose for coming here, actually. And we've totally lost track of that. And so we don't, we've even been taught that these, this energy stuff doesn't even exist. And I'm sure you're aware of that. Um, but it, it does. So to go back to this, there's 50 petals on this. <clears throat> if you comment these all up, minus the crown chakra, I assume everybody's familiar with this, right? Yeah. There's 50 petals on this. <clears throat> and I was looking at this and saying, well, come up with 192 fundamental frequencies. This I needed like a, a particle accelerator, and I didn't happen to have one of those in my backyard. And so I was looking at this concept with the Vedas, and the Vedas all work with the chakra petal frequencies. Mm -hmm. And I, by this time, I had already figured out all the frequencies of the petals. But there were, there were 50 of them, and what happens, I use a what's called a harmonic generator, which is what this is which gives me what's called an overtone and an undertone for each frequency. So there's going to be two frequencies for each pedal, an overtone and an undertone. Actually, there's three. There's a yin, a yang, and a neutral. But at this time, I was just working with two of them. <clears throat> so I'm toying around with that and saying, somehow i got to come up with 192 fundamental frequencies from those 50, and being I'm using an overtone and an undertone, I've got really 100 frequencies. And somehow I've got to come up with 192 of these things. And I knew it had to be exact. It couldn't, I couldn't have some left over. I couldn't be short. It had to come out to 192. Otherwise, it wasn't going to work. And so this is how I did it. From here down is 48. 48 times 2 gives me 96. So I looked at that and I said, 96 and 96, that gives me 192. Get them together. Okay? So I got the number now, but it's like, OK, how do we get that into the body? And how do we get it different? Well, I still got this Ajna chakra that's got two petals on it. right? So I looked at it and I said, well, if I play these 96 frequencies, Against this pedal, I'm going to have a chord with one frequency. And if I play this 96 against this pedal, I'm going to have 96 different chords. Where you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I got 96 and 96, which gives me 192. So I got that. This is at the level of the mind, the Ajna Chakra up here. And so I've come up with 192 fundamental frequencies of consciousness. And, and then I made CDs of it, and that was indeed what happened. It was, I could feel it affecting the mind, and I could feel it affecting the associated organ or tissue that was supposed to be in the body. Okay? Plus, I do serology, and so I, I could feel it actually affecting the eyes as well, where, where it, it was uh, the red lines in your eyes that shows the stress patterns going on. So that's how I figured 192 fundamental frequencies of consciousness. Um, see, each, each organ and each tissue in the body has a specific frequency associated with it. So <clears throat> I use this to demonstrate this. 
this would say be uh, an example of say like the frequency of the wrist here. So this is this isn't the exact note, but this is just an example of it. And what happens? This this is a there's an energetic template that gets set down right at conception, and that template can be interpreted in terms of light, or it can be interpreted in terms of sound. I just did it in terms of sound. Okay, and as long as that template and that note, for instance, remains coherent, the body part will continue to function. Because this is like a software. It's like uh, information. Okay, it's, a, it's a program that's telling the body, in this case, you're going to be a wrist and you're going to function like this. Okay, as long as that note stays coherent, the body will stay functional. And that's for all of them, all your organs, all the tissues, all the fluids, everything, brain, everything. But what happens is, let's say if I fall on the wrist this way, okay, it puts a lot of stress and strain into the wrist, which puts in non-biodynamic frequencies. This would be a biodynamic frequency that the body organizes around. Stress would be a non-biodynamic frequency, but nonetheless it's a frequency. And what happens, the cells don't know which program to follow. They follow the biologic or the, the biodynamic frequency there, or the stress frequency, sort of like that. And so the cells get all confused, and that gets interpreted in terms of pain and limitation that the wrist doesn't function properly because the software is kind of messed up. Okay, everybody kind of got that? Well, what happens when you listen to my stuff, it's like my stuff is this pure notes, which are, uh, that's inherently deeply inside us. That's, that's there, and that's much more powerful, that's much more stable than the unstable stress frequencies. And so when you listen to the harmonics, what will happen, it will clear out anything that's not biodynamic. Anything that's not that unified field, 192 fundamental frequencies, anything that's not that gets cleared out. And that can be uh, heavy metals, it can be food poisoning, it can be uh, stress, it can be fear, it can be, can be anything that isn't, uh, well, what I say, biodynamic, isn't life enhancing. Biodynamic is life enhancing. So we have a lot of things on this plane that aren't life enhancing. Okay? And that all gets cleared out, <clears throat> whether you like it or not. <laughs> so let me give you an idea of a harmonic while I'm playing musical instruments. Harmonics have different qualities about them than musical notes. I'm a uh, classically trained musician. And when uh, I started hearing the uh, harmonics, I realized that I wasn't hearing regular notes. I've, I've been a musician my whole life and couldn't quite figure out why I couldn't figure the notes out because I've got really good ears, so I really good hearing and can usually figure stuff out. But the, these things, there, were, there was really a problem figuring it out. And so I realized that I was dealing with harmonics. See, now harmonics are the notes that make up the notes. And uh, the notes that we hear, like the note on the piano or that, there's actually harmonics that are making that up. And the harmonics actually give the musical instrument its quality. So like a Stradivarius violin will have a lot of harmonics to it, as opposed to a Suzuki violin will only have a few harmonics to it. And what I found was that harmonics correspond directly to the energy bodies. It's like piano doesn't, okay, but harmonics uh, octave, the octaves of harmonics correspond directly to the subtle bodies, the emotional body, the mental body, the spiritual body. So to get at those, you can use the octaves of the different harmonics, uh, which basically this is, this is a picture of the harmonics. But I'll explain this in a little bit. <coughs> so, this is the lowest note that this flute will play. And without raising my fingers, see, 
the higher note is a harmonic that you can that this will produce. Okay? And um, usually musical instruments will only produce a, a few harmonics. And I was hearing all these harmonics and was realizing that what I was needing was something really, really quite elaborate, a uh, harmonic generator. And, and even though I owned a music store, I, I, I owned many music stores, I owned three music stores at one time, uh, I, I wasn't familiar with harmonic generators, but I type it in the web and, and up comes Barbara Hero's site who lives up in Maine. And she's got this thing that she, she channeled this, Land, it's called Landoma Keyboard, she channeled this from Pythagoras. And so, <clears throat> uh, you know, I, I, I read it, it was $2,000, and I said, geez, that's the exact instrument that I need, but, you know, do I really want to spend $2,000 over the internet and get a toy, you know? And, and so I said, you know, I'm going to go up to Maine, and I want to put my hands on this thing and make sure it's going to do what I, I think it will do, because I, I think this will heal up all illnesses, because if all illness is a frequency, this generates any frequency that you want. I can tune this to like a millionth of a hertz, which is a really, really small thing, and then the harmonics should generate any frequency that I wanted. And so I've got this envision that I was going to do this, but I wanted to try it. So uh, I make arrangements that I was going to go up and I'm just going to work with it. And in the meantime, you know, I was. Uh, you know, two thousand dollars. I don't have two thousand dollars. I got a million musical instruments now. And, you know, doubt starts to come in, and I send her an email saying, "You know, I'm going to come up in the spring. The weather will be better, and I'll have more money then." And so I'm laying in my bedroom, fiddling around with a synthesizer, trying to figure out these notes that I'm starting to hear in my head more and more, relating to the body. And all of a sudden, I look, and there's this like swirling going on up in my ceiling. And all of a sudden, sort of this portal opens up, and this voice comes through the portal, and it goes, Daryl, get the keyboard and get it now. <laughs> and I went, oh, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so I went up to, to see Barbara that weekend and got one of the keyboards and explained to her my concept of, of uh, what this thing would do. And she said, well, you you got to start to speak on this stuff. And I said, well, who's going to let me speak? I'm not a doctor and I don't have a book. And she said, well, I'm, you're going to speak because I'm going to tell people you're going to speak because I'm on the board of just about every conference out there and I'm just going to tell them that you're going to speak. <laughs> and so like within a month, I was out speaking on the National Circuit on this Landoma and my concepts. After working with it for a while, I actually, uh, as a classically trained musician, I was trying to figure out the frequency of the body. Uh, probably by the time I was in massage school, uh, I, I, I've got training as a massage therapist, a craniosacral therapist, a polarity therapist, an orthobionomy practitioner, an esoteric healer, and a whole bunch of other energetic modalities. And early on, that bodywork career, uh, I started hearing that I was going to be able to play the body. I played the body. I, you know, I knew as a musician I was going to, I was going to be really, really specific. That I was going to be able to play the wrist or the eye or the ear or the brain or the liver or the spleen. And you know, I was familiar with the metaphysical concept that all these things had a frequency around And I said, well, I was starting to hear that I was going to be able to figure out what that what those frequencies are. And uh, I didn't know how I was going to do about do it, and every time I would try, it would just be a dismal failure. And uh, so I was uh, in A Course in Miracles and met this older woman, her name was Joan Rosso, and she asked me all these questions about my practice. And uh, I finally said, you know, just why are you asking me all these questions? <laughs> So I was paranoid, because nobody talked to me in Buffalo except her. <laughs> and, and so I finally asked her, and she said, well, my husband, Al, was the head surgeon in Buffalo General for 15 years, and a surgeon in the Korean War, and he would come home routinely and say, you know, drugs and surgery really don't work. We just don't know what else to do. 